Hello, this is Bob Schroyer from Nancy's Knickknacks. We're just about ready to start shipping our new motorized skein winder, and I wanted to uh, make a small video or short video here to show you some of the features of how this unit has uh, turned out. I have it mounted on a um, high floor stand at this point for demonstration purposes. This floor stand is the one that's typically used with our new four yard skein winder, so it's very tall. I think it's about 28 inches tall to where the um, swift column uh, goes in, into the unit. So the total height is probably oh, 45 inches or so. Uh, not counting the arm height, but you can see it's a pretty tall unit. You also see to the side, when we use a floor stand with the motorized unit, we now have added a control panel stand. Now why did we do that? Uh, because we determined that by trying to attach a horizontal arm that would be cantilevered off the main unit, it just wasn't practical. Um, you'd have to go pretty far out with a cantilevered arm. That's a horizontal arm coming off that column and it makes it pretty awkward. By using the freestanding control panel stand, as you see pictured there, which is about 30 inches high, uh, you can move that just about anywhere you want. It's only limited by the length of the uh, Ethernet cable that runs from the motor control box on the back of the uh, skein winder to the control panel. So we figure that's, that's a pretty uh, flexible system and we prefer to have that over a, an arm. Now this particular stand is a prototype stand and I don't have the final production components in from my supplier yet. So that's why you see those mounting holes there. We basically uh, adapted some existing components in, to make this stand. But essentially that control panel will be on a slightly tilted surface. It will be permanently attached to the, uh, to the uh, column. So one of the main features of this motorized skein winder is that it's controlled by the ERC, which is that meter at the top of the column there. And we're going to zoom in on that in just a moment. So what I've done is I've connected my yarn. I've got a cone on the floor. And we're going to start running that. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll set a quantity here of uh, 20 rotations. But I could also set yards and, and meters. So that's our target. When it gets to 20 rotations, it will automatically shut the, uh, the unit down. And see that was all done by the computer. So what that means is that you could walk away from the unit and set it up. Let's say you're going to run a very large job, a couple of hundred yards on a skein, and this uh, ERC will take control and control, turn off the, uh, the motor drive. Now it doesn't get any better than that, although let me show you two other features here. So in this case I'm going to change the mode. We have three modes on here. Rotations, which is RT. Uh, yards, which it's going to ask us how many inches it is in the circumference of the uh, of the skein. We can also go to meters, which would ask us for centimeters. And back to rotation. So there's three modes. We'll go back to the yards mode, and I'm going to enter 72, as if we we're making a two-yard skein. I'm going to save that quantity. So now the computer knows that every rotation that it counts is equal to 72 inches, or 2 yards. And we'll set our target at 20 yards. And you'll be able to see the accumulation of the uh, yardage there as we, uh, as we wind the yarn. And then it will shut it off. Now it will drift past 20. You see it went to 22, 24. So what you do in a case like that 
is the faster it's going of course and the more yards that are on each rotation like in that case it actually went two rotations past the the theoretical stop point of 20 but because there are two yards on each rotation it equaled four additional yards so you simply take that into consideration when you're when you're keying in your data I'm going to reset that in fact I'm going to change the mode I'm going to go to meters now. It's asking me for the number of centimeters. You know, there's a uh, there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. So let's say we want to make it uh, seventy. We'll save that, and we'll have a, a target number of twenty meters. So every rotation, the computer knows it's 70 centimeters. And when it gets to that number, it'll stop it. So you're able to set meters, yards, rotations. You can key in the exact uh, measurement around the circumference. We even give you a 10-foot tape measure to do that. And... Uh, you know, that's the most sophisticated yardage counter on the market. Now, please excuse the number of cables I have on the floor. I'm running uh, two different meters here and a motor, and I just haven't had the time to really dress those up properly for this video. But anyway, that normally wouldn't be as bad as it, uh, as it looks right now. But anyway, what we have here is on the motor housing, which is a... Uh, dovetail joint box we've got a, a sheet metal housing here this isn't the final production version but basically it will have two switches this will be the main power and this will be the reverse switch so on this side all we have are switches on this side I'm running both an EYM which is the electronic yarn meter that plugs in here the ERC plugs in there power plugs in there in terms of the ERC, we have a data cable here. This data cable goes down and plugs into the motor drive. And then the ERC has its own power as well. Which is a great thing because, because it has its own power, uh, you can see the display even in the dark. You'll notice that uh, this knob is on the front I-beam of the skein winder. This part of the skein winder is the main body so if I lift this off and put it on the tabletop then of course that knob will stay with that unit and that knob is what connects the uh, motor box in the back and the, and the pulleys. So with this simple knob we basically loosen it and I can slide the motor housing up or down and thus put tension on the belt. So if I want to get more tension, I loosen the knob and this rear housing will slide up. Or I press it down, it makes the belt taut, and I retighten it. It's really a simple and yet very clever uh, mechanism. Some of our customers have our electronic yarn meter, which you see pictured, or positioned I should say, on that table. That uh, yarn meter was the first one we designed uh, in this family and the yarn actually goes around a wheel and there's electronic encoder and basically it's measuring precisely what the yarn length is whereas the ERC which is on the skein winder is measuring rotations so it's it's calculating the yardage based on the data we put into it in terms of what a rotation equals but in the case of the EYM it's actually measuring the physical yarn. So it's a more precise measurement. That's not to say that the ERC is not precise, but for those uh, users like weavers who are really interested in measuring exactly the length of the yarn, then uh, the EYM is a good choice and they can use it in a multiple number of ways. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're going to have the yarn go through the EYM and turn on and off, or turn off, I should say, the uh, skein winder, just like the ERC did. 
So as you recall, I showed you the cable that goes into the motor housing. There's a dedicated jack to attach the EYM. And there's one for the ERC as well. So what we'll do now is uh, we've set, uh, or I've set it to 20 yards. So when it gets to 20 yards, it'll turn off the, uh, the skein winder. So there you go. The skein winder, the motorized skein winder, can be controlled by both the ERC or the EYM. Now I personally prefer the ERC because it's out of the way, it's part of the skein winder itself, it's pretty slick. Here you can see I've mounted the motorized skein winder <coughs> excuse me, on the uh, table. So we've gotten rid of the floor stand and we've mounted it right on the tabletop mount that comes with the uh, skein winder and uh, Swift. That's the basic way it comes. And there's the uh, standard uh, yarn guide that comes with the uh, skein winder. If you own a Swift, you can also purchase that as an option. In this application, uh, you would typically get a three foot ethernet cable, which would be sufficient to run a cable from the motor box over to this area and you could still move it around. Um, that control panel fits underneath the rotating arm so it's not a uh, it's not a risk although you may want to move it to the side simply so you don't get in the way of the rotating arms. So this would be the typical way that most people would use it. Uh, you know only those people that need to uh, get it off their table or whatever would have the floor stand or if they just want to have a floor stand uh, but this would be typically the way most users would use it. They'd have the control panel right on the table surface and uh, the Swift or the skein winder right on the tabletop. And that's the rear of the motor housing. By the way, the, uh, the RPMs on this setup will be about 175 RPMs. We have downgraded the 4-yard skein winder uh, with the same motor setup because there's more mass, there's more weight to the system. That tends to run at about 110 RPMs, but you know you're putting four yards on each rotation, so you're basically doing 440 yards case. You're doing 175 times two yards or two meters. That basically gives you 350 yards per minute. So that's quite a bit of yarn. But anyway, if you're looking for the uh, latest and greatest in motorized skein winders. Uh, this, is the, this is the one that you want to have. It's got uh, all types of capabilities. We're going to have, uh, well we already have a triple skein guide for this unit. You can, you can wind three skeins at the same time. We will even have a wet pack, I call it, which is a system in which you could have damp yarn. Uh, you can wind because we change out the wood into plastic components on those yarn guides. So there's no damage whatsoever to any of the components if you want to run damp uh, yarn. Plus the electronic metering systems we have are uh, second to none. These are the most advanced meters you can get in this industry. So we've got a great mechanism, great electronics, uh, great options. There's really no other reason to buy uh, any, any other model that we can think of. So hopefully you'll agree with us and uh, place an order. Thank you.